Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this episode uh, of our series uh, in, um, you know, living in the name or with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very excited to, uh, you know, to begin this year, uh, year 2021. Um, this, this would be our first um, episode and with our guest, Dr. Hassan Alwan, very excited to have you again. Last time we we met was last year. Assalamu <laughs> so, alaikum, everyone. Again, it's always my pleasure, uh, and I'm very excited as well to always speak about about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Divine, and how to to realize those names in everyday life. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, Subhanallah. You know, a lot of people are thinking, "Oh, am I going to make it through?" <laughs> All right, 2020. No. Am I going to, you know, or, and then we're all, we're desperately asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us and protect us. Uh, the, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the one that preserves and protects. Thus, I think it would be beautiful and appropriate to talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, preserves and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala, how protective Allah azza wa jal is. And we know that uh, of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that we always want uh, to uh, you know, manifest itself in our lives. Uh, actually, two names that come from the same root word, right? Al-Hafil and Al-Hafil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hafil and he is, uh, he is Hafil. Both come from the same root word uh, that uh, implies or you know means hif, which is preservation, wow. uh, protection, right? And we know that in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, says, "Inna Rabbi ala kulli shayin hafiz, wa Rabbuka ala kulli shayin hafiz." We find this in one more than one place in the Quran. Allah describes, refers to Himself as hafiz, but also we also find. In the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, Ya'qub, who was really so concerned about the safety and the well-being of his uh, son, uh, Ya'qub said, "Fallahu khayrun hafidhan wa huwa arhamun rahmin." Allah is the best uh, hafidh or protector. So, you know, what are your reflections regarding just the, the like the linguistic or the literal meaning of of this of this uh, name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Subhanallah, it's a, uh, it's a very beloved name and uh, Subhanallah, whenever something happens, whenever we feel a need for something, it is nothing more than an invitation, an emptiness for one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So currently, like with, as you said, Ya Sheikh, with what's going on, there is this need of, I'm not safe and I, I, need, I need to be guarded from an invisible virus, right? So uh, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you pointed out, al hafiz or al hafiz Interestingly, linguistically in Arabic language, uh, it has multiple meanings that are all related, but it gives very interesting dimensions. So the first meaning is the one that guards, the one that preserves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guards and preserves and maintains. So uh, we, we can reflect on that. Uh, I, I want to get money, but after I get money, I need to preserve my money. I'm healthy. I have health, but I need to preserve health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that maintains guards. And then the second meaning, which is also very powerful, is the one that keeps. Keeps the keeper. The keeper. So yeah. nothing yeah. gets lost. Yes. Nothing gets lost with Allah. If, if, no. if I do something good or, you know, and you say, oh, it didn't work, nothing gets lost. He keeps everything. Every word I say, every action I did, nothing will get lost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the keeper. So it has both meanings. Nothing will get lost. He maintains and keeps, right? No. And, and he um, uh, keeps things, everything that we no. do. This is Sorry. linguistically. No. Uh, can I add one sentence on the meaning just to combine yes. everything? Yes. So they say the following. If you look to, so how we would describe Bismillah al-Hafiz. One can say he's the one whose power per preserves the heavens and the earth. The one who visibly guards every single detail of the creation. The one that preserves and remembers all that has been ever done or said. Hmm. So that's, that's alhamdulillah, like a concise way to say. In the the spirit, yeah. no. 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 So, um, so he is the one that one say uh, um, protects, preserves, 
guards, but he's also the one that keeps and maintains. No. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both meanings are are there in the in the in the name and the beautiful name, the magnificent name of Allah, Al-Hafil or Al-Hafil. Now, it is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, someone might ask, okay, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides hif, hif, which means protection, preservation, or keeping, right? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prov- provides that, you know, for? No, right? it's, it's so what are different. the various elements in our lives that are so essential for us? You know, I, I believe that actually this session could have not actually be, been held, right? We, you and I would, would have not been able to communicate. We would have not been able to do any of these things without the hif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, uh, you know, protection, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, aid, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, um, you know, um, grace that, that he's actually maintaining us. So someone might ask, okay, what are the various aspects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides hif for? Now, so well, it's, it's a very interesting question because uh, if you notice the ayah that you mentioned, uh, Allahu khayrun hafidah, uh, you mentioned who said it, it's Yaqub alayhi salam. One that as, as a father, and even with the condition we're in, I see my son, and he he so and he loves his son not only because his son, because of his pure heart, because of his righteousness, right? And you're concerned. So he's the one that's making this dua in general. Allahu Khairun Hafidah. Now, when you look to the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, well, when you look at it, what happened to Yusuf? He was thrown in the well. Uh, he was taken as a slave. Riq. He was thrown in prison. I mean, when you look outwardly, hey, things didn't go as well as you would like. But yet, look at that. Despite uh, what happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. Despite, things, I mean, if, things, if, if worked out perf- things worked out for him very well. Yes. Not Everything only fell that, in place. If, no. you, if you take a kid nowadays and this yeah. happens too, you will say, well, he's going to be antisocial. He's going to be a criminal. You know, the society was not just to him. But Yusuf alayhi salam, despite everything, Allah 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 guarded and maintained his morals, his good character, his iman, his tawheed. All those, despite whatever happened, Allah guarded Yusuf alayhi salam. So when we say uh, 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 we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guard, of course I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guard my body. Of course. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant safety to my body. But more important, Ya Rabbi, guard my heart. Ya Rabbi, guard my deeds. From Riyah, from ostentation. Yeah. Guard so my heart want, from arrogance. You want guard Allah to guard arrogance. everything that is essential about your being, your existence, including, yeah. yeah. You know, subhanAllah, you know, we're told, we're taught by the Prophet, you know, the, the very theme of this, uh, of this conversation that we've been having is living in the name of Allah, right? Or with the name of Allah. And we're, we're told that the Prophet, ta- you know, teaches us to say every evening and every morning, uh, Bismik Allahumma. In your name, O oh Allah, I live and I die. In your name, I, I I come upon the day and I start my day. In your name, right? This 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 uh, evening has come upon us in your name. So you basically uh, seeking that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala preserves you, right? And yeah. and, and one of one of the Subhanallah, you know, I remembered one of the um, as you were speaking, you know, one of the verses that we're supposed to recite that is supposed to that actually does provide protection um and that preserves us is ayatul kursi the greatest ayah in the quran and in the ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah speaks about the heavens and the earth right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know it does not overwhelm allah to, to preserve and to keep the heavens and the earth keep everything functioning the way it, it, it does Right, does not overwhelm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not exhaust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take care of the of the cosmos, <laughs> if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take care of the universe, right, with no effort, you know, what makes any one of us, you know, feel that you know my 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 needs or or whatever I need care for, what what you know, preserving me as an individual, you know, is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't provide me with. <laughs> right. Well, so so, so I, I, I have one reflection here, something very personal. Like you know, whenever I feel afraid or like I feel I need guarded, right? Uh, I do the following, and like I, 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 I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to enable me to say it in the best possible way. I actually go and do the following. I take the Quran, 
the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then look at it. And you ask why. And I'll tell you, ya Sheikh. Because in the Quran, uh, this Quran was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah al Hijr was revealed when things weren't that good at all. When they were in Sha'b ibn Abi Talib and you know, the Muslims are under the feet of everyone. People are dying. You know, it was a terrible condition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse that is so powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidhu. Yeah. This is a challenge. From that position, he tells the, the, the people that yani, were mocking the Muslims and the Muslims were about to be extinguished. Khalas, you know, they're in the desert. Allah says, not only I have sent those words, the Quran, and surely I will guard them. And that's, those people couldn't read and write. There was no USB you know, and, and, and computers. That's, and nowadays, whenever I, I look to the Quran, I say, subhanAllah, no matter what happens, the fact that the Muslims have the Quran unchanged and we all know it's not because of us. I, I, if this was left to us, it's miraculous. It's it's it's, it's an act of it's, like, it's an act of God. It's, there is divine intervention. I mean, there is that no... is a, uh, for me a direct manifestation of Ismailah al Habib. And then I tell myself, the one that guards this, inshallah, can guard me. Mm-hmm. And then comes an action. Can I guard the Quran? You know, like when we when we say Hafid al Quran. Ma- Memorizing the Quran, the word used in Arabic. Yeah, we call a person who memorizes the Quran hafil, a person who what? preserves I keep it. Mm. I, I, so see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable me. Allah, Allah. Keep this. So, so if you want, but you know, in other words, you're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a declaration in the Quran that Allah azza wa jal will preserve this message and will preserve this Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. Verse 9 from Surah Al-Hijr. No. And in that, in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, guaranteed that this message and this, uh, you know, book, this scripture is going to be preserved. It will be protected. And this is one of the manifestations of the name of Allah al-Hafidh or al-Hafid. Now, you're, you know, a person who, who is part of that process of preserving the Quran, you know, i.e. a half of the Quran, a person who memorizes the Quran or a person who has the Quran manifested in his or her life, right? They're part of that process. You were saying that that protection is extended to them as well, given that they actually do preserve the Quran, not only memorize it but actually um, and that's act the point. upon it. Yeah. Preserving is not is not hefd for sadr is not to preserve the letters. That's not only. the only as yes yes beautiful. And, and so, yeah, and Subhanallah, Sheikh, maybe it's a, it's a good time to comment on the hadith, which I think is very very powerful and. Uh, it's very useful. Oh, yeah. in our... I, I know where you're going with this. Allah yeah. should we do that now? Hadith. Yeah, yeah. It's no, no, no. And... Beautiful hadith. The Prophet says I... this to, to a young cousin of nah. his, right? Nah. Yeah. And, and, and especially now when we're saying, look what's happening, tell me what to do so I get guarded. Yeah. I want Allah to guard me. What should I be doing to, to, to get Allah's hifth? And we say the following The Prophet وسلم, told Ibn Abbas, a young, young man, Inni u'allimu ka kalimat. I'm going to teach you some words, right? And look at that. And what does he tell him? <laughs> and if I was literally to translate, guard and preserve Allah, and I mean, how we'll speak about that, and Allah will guard and preserve you. Guard and preserve Allah, and you will find him directly in front of you. How do I guard? Of course, I'm not protecting Allah. Protect the commands of Allah. Mm. The, Allah has two types of commands. Amr al qadari wa shari. There are divine decrees that, you know, earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, you know, vul- I have no control over it. It's the decree of Allah, the universal decree of Allah, right? Those are like the COVID-19, will I get, you know, Allah's, Allah's the one controlling that. But Allah has commands that we call the shari commands, the commands of Allah, do and don't. Mm. So here the hadith points to the fact, if I was to guard Allah in my heart, meaning Allah's commands and Allah's, uh, uh, my akhlaq and what Allah orders me to do. If I, if I was to guard salah, if I was to guard my eyes, if I was to guard my ears, if I was to guard uh, uh, paying zakah, if I guard the commands of Allah, amr Allah shari, Allah will indeed guard me in all his divine decrees. Mm-hmm. And Allah will be in front of me, guiding me. Remember mm-hmm. the ism Allah al-Hadi. He'll always, I'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll find my way through things. As a matter of fact, you know, in the hadith of Imam Ahmad, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari uh, reports that the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, that man hafidha ma bayna 
uh, whoever basically preserves, uh, whoever does hif, whoever preserves and uh, guards, um, basically the Prophet used a metaphor to refer to the tongue, meaning control your tongue and what you say, you know, watch your language, watch, watch what you say, don't abuse people, don't say, and whoever also uh, safeguards or uh, preserves uh, their their private part. In other words, they don't engage in any illicit behavior or relationship. Whoever preserves that, right? The Prophet ﷺ says that al Jannah. That person will enter Jannah. So you maintain the commandments of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You will be preserved in this life, but you also will get the ultimate prize, which is which is Jannah. Beautiful. You know, ultimately, someone might say, but if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't guard me, right? If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't help me. Um, you know, guard myself against sins as well as, as much as he guards me against um, any dangerous elements in this, you know, uh, then I won't be able to do it, uh, you know, on my own, right? Yeah, no, no. like subhanAllah, Sheikh, a uh, very powerful reflection. Uh, that's from Ibn Qayyim, Madarij al-Salikin, when he, he, he speaks about uh, tawbah, the station of, you know, mm. repentance and what happens when somebody slips. And it has to do with what you said. When I slip, oftentimes we see what I made a mistake. This is haram. The shaitan caused me to do this. All good. But he said some people that know Allah as al-hafiz, as mm. al-wali, they see something else. They see al-inkhila' an al-asma. They see that the default is Allah's protecting me. The default is like having a young boy, you know, and, and, and you're having your son and he sees the electric outlet and he's trying to put his finger in. You won't let him. You will not let him do that. That will hurt him. If if he, you're watching and he puts his finger there, it has to be what you let him do that. So they see when they slip, it's not just a slip. What have I done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have removed that protection? Let me down. And allow me to do that. And of course, for a reason. Allah wants to teach. But that breaks their heart. It's not just I slipped. It was before that. Where was it, where was Al-Hafiz? I, what have I done to remove the shields, you know, from the first place? Uh, the verse in the Quran, very powerful. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a human. Mm. That Allah assigned angels to guard the human beings from behind and from in front. Nothing happens. The default is that we're protected. Only when things Allah wants, then he removes them. I know okay. that's... Yeah, yeah. Someone might say, okay, but that is in terms of like physically, right? So your well-being is ensured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Uh, you know, until basically Qadr comes, if there is something that was meant to happen to you, like a sickness or uh, some sort of loss or, um, you know, getting hurt, any any affliction. And, all, you know, of course, the, you know, eventually also we're all going to die. So once once that qadr is coming, right, nothing is going to interfere with that, right? But but before that, right, be, when it's not your time to die, when it's not your time for something bad to happen, what keeps you maintained and preserved? You're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's the one that basically has angels assigned to protect you, right? From from above you, from from beneath you, from to your left, to your right, you know, which reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet teaches us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us from every direction, right? So, so that someone might say, okay, that's, that's in the physical sense. But, you know, how, how can I make sure that I don't, like I have my iman and my, um, my faith? How, how, can I, how can I ensure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves my faith, which is, which is the most essential, um, you know, most, most uh, important, uh, you know, element in the believer's uh, life. How, how do I ensure that I, I keep, you know, my faith preserved and protected? Uh, perhaps one of the answers is what Ibn al-Qayyim said. Ibn al-Qayyim mm -hmm. has a very powerful statement in his book, al Fawaid, mm -hmm. uh, And he, he relates uh, the inward dimension, because I, I need a lot to protect two things. Mm -hmm. My outward, my, my salah. You know, that I can pray five times a day. I mean, outward acts of obedience. I need that protect, right? And second, the inward. 
my certitude, mm. uh, my tawakkul, my reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my purity of heart, being mm. having contentment because mm. decrees happen, right? So will I be patient? Will I be content? I need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to preserve iman in my heart, even in those conditions. Mm. So Ibn Qayyib noticed something really interesting, and he, he, he writes it in Al-Fawai, he says that the way we guard Allah's commands, Al-Shari'ah, uh, 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 Mm. reflects on how Allah guards again our inner state so he says those who guards mm. the outward commands meaning what they pray on time they pray, pray in the beginning of the time you know uh -huh. Allah will give them patience when things like, don't worry you know you will feel pain but Allah will give you patience and he says those that, that guard not only the outward actions but they guard their khushu'a in salah yes. I want to pray in the, the inward states that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm also guarding, I, I, I want to uproot arrogance, I want to uproot ostentation, I want to uproot envy, and I'm working not only outwardly, inwardly, the reward is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what happens, he grant them inner states, contentment, mm -hmm. uh, pleasures, so they are protected even when decrees happen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those inner states, are com they don't even feel the pain, they are protected there. Allah. Yeah, so maybe that's uh, that's beautiful. I mean, the, really, the, the, you know, because you know, if you if you think about it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about those who uh, are very mindful of the purity of their faith, right? Um, and how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, you know, guarantees them uh, inner peace and tranquility and safety. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-An'am, for instance, says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُوا وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Right? So the ones that, that preserve their faith and they, they preserve their creed and they're very mindful of the state of their heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, gives them, uh, you know, amn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them, you know, safety. But also it, it reminds me of another ayah from Surah uh, At-Tawbah, Surah, uh, Surah, uh, Surah At-Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 112, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the believers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Right? Yeah. Those who, who observe the limits and the boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are very protective of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Give them glad tidings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would, would preserve them. Uh, you also, um, as you were speaking, subhanAllah, you reminded me also of another group of verses that talk about human nature, right? In al insana khuliqa halu'a, right? Yeah. And how the exception to those who, who have, um, if you will, um, you know, not percent, like spiritual flaws, the exception is الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ يُحَافِظُونَ So, so those who basically preserve and safeguard their prayers. But also there is another one. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ فُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ No, subhanAllah. Once you do, you start reflecting, you see it everywhere, right? It is. And this principle that Ibn Al-Qayyim like states, I think it's 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 a very powerful, and wallahi ya shaykh, you notice people that have problems with command. Why did Allah order this? Why did Allah say I can't do that? When bad things happen, you know, afflictions, they won't have the patience. There is definitely a relation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarding the heart from the hardship and afflictions that are bound to happen in this life and the way that heart is willing to submit and guard what Allah wants. There is a relation and it's all over the Quran subhanAllah. Subhanallah. You know, before, we run, before we run out of time, I would like to do a couple of things, inshallah. Yeah. I, and I, need, and I need your help. One, I want to uh, quickly recap. Uh, but, but before I do the recap, um, I want to say, subhanAllah, in some, in some cultures, for instance, um, you know, I have, um, you know, family, um, I have cousins who are, uh, you know, half Pakistani. So uh, in Urdu, people say khudafiz, which means khuda hafiz, or which means Allah hafiz, right? So, so someone might say, well, you shouldn't say khuda, but I, I personally believe that khuda is like Persian for God or Lord, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that provides protection, you know, preservation. And I don't see it as a big deal. But whether you say Allah hafiz or Khuda hafiz, it's, it's a beautiful greeting that comes at the end of any interaction, right? When people are departing, 
people wish each other to be in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Right? And we are, I think, taught in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when people travel, right, to, to say, astawdi'ukallah, yeah. right? So you leave them in the protection of Allah because there is no guarantee, no matter how vigilant one is, no matter how careful and how cautious you, you are, right? There is no you know, guarantee. So can you just say a couple of things about like how in, in these kind of relationships that we have, how we should, how uh, wishing and praying for one another, for our, you know, for wellness and for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as to the like importance of it, you know, and, and the effect of that on the individual who's, who's, um, who's departing. Yeah, subhanAllah, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, uh, it puts focus. What's the most important thing when I see mm. a person, right? And, and uh, we make a dua for that person. And, and uh, that dua is very powerful because we realize as humans, we are vulnerable. Yeah. And we realize it's a, it's, a, it's a fact that when we deny, we suffer. I can't protect myself. Mm. I cannot protect you. And most importantly, like I love my son, Ya Sheikh. I love my daughter so much. But you know what scares me is may Allah protect them from accidents, from COVID-19. I can't protect their iman. Right. I can't. I can't protect la ilaha illallah. Will they be Muslims? That as a dad scares me. I, what about their akhlaq? What about their moral? What about their, uh, their heart? So one of the best dua that we can give to the ones that we love is that I wish I, I cannot protect you, but the one that protects the heavens and the earth, the one that protected the Quran, the one that sent angels to protect us, Al-Hafiz. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you, not only outwardly, but as we reflected here, to guard you in what you say, in what you do, the state of your heart, the iman, la ilaha illallah, your akhlaq. And that's a beautiful dua. We need it. So and brothers and sisters out there, please, all the time, uh, you know, you know, whenever you, you, you part ways or whenever... Um, you can, whenever you separate from someone or you leave them, always wish them and pray for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them. And Dr. Hassan Alwan here reminds us that your intention should be not only for them to be physically preserved and protected, but also spiritually and emotionally in every sense that the individual's yeah. faith, the individual's um, you know, mental and emotional and spiritual well-being also be, be preserved. Um, Sheikh, can I add one, one important thing? Because yes. I think this is as extremely important. Bismillah al-Hafiz. It's mm. very important. And like I, it's good that it's at the end. We oftentimes, when we think about, we think about Bismillah al-Hafiz, I'm vulnerable. I need protection. There are evil outside. Allah created things that, you know, can hurt me. But if you think the opposite way, and you find it in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rabbi, protect people from my own evils. Oh, Protect, protect my, my son and my daughter from my own tongue. Mm. Protect my wife from my own anger. Mm. So how many of us think, not only like, Ya Rabbi, protect me. No, no, no. Protect others from the evil within me. Yeah. So that, that's also a very beautiful thing. And that's why I, you know, Hassan, that's why I love the the daily supplications, the daily prayers, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say every morning and every evening because it includes all of that. <laughs> I would become a you know, I seek refuge in Allah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <a> <laughs> <du> <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what talking about. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's beautiful. And, and, and I, 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 I want to take this moment and actually invite everyone who's watching us. We have at 6.30 Central, we have this daily supplication um, uh, session that we do. We come together and we read uh, and we go over the morning supplications and prayers, right? Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah preserves us. It's an educational, basically, um, uh, process for people to memorize and to commit to it, hoping that at, at the end of it, inshallah ta'ala, when we end this program at the end of the month, that you would have developed this habit of seeking uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection uh, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve you. Uh, you know, uh, we're running out of time here, my dear brothers and sisters, but before, um, before we end this session, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hafil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hafil, he's the one that preserves and protects and guards, but he's also the one that keeps and maintains subhanahu wa ta'ala he preserves the heavens and the earth subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, he preserves uh, his, um, he, you know, his creation. He preserves human beings. He preserves everything. He pre preserves this universe of ours. He also keeps uh, our, um, you know, rizq, our sustenance, and he provides for us, but he also keeps our actions and our reactions and our deeds. He keeps record of all of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that uh, can protect us from evil, external and internal, uh, self-inflicted, or if it's inflicted by someone else. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us to preserve and safeguard his boundaries and his laws. And those who do uh, preserve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in the hadith uh, that Dr. Hassan al reminded us of, of Abdullah bin Abbas, uh, the Prophet told him, preserve or safeguard Allah's commandments and Allah will, will preserve you. Preserve Allah and tajidhu tujahak, he will be guiding you, he will be in front of you, guiding you. So um, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who preserve the laws of Allah, preserve and protect and safeguard their prayers and, and are mindful of the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal keeps all of us, keeps you and your loved ones uh, safe. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep us all well uh, throughout this year. May you all have a, a wonderful and beautiful year. Dr. Hassan Alwan, Jazakallah khair. It's great to have you. I wish you and your family and your loved ones, inshallah, a beautiful, protect, you know, uh, productive, peaceful year full of blessings, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you Allah for joining Allah. us. Allahumma hafadna bina tahfad biya ibadak as-salam. Ameen, 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 ya Rabbi. Exactly. Yeah, it would be appropriate, inshallah ta'ala, to close with that. Ameen, Allahumma hafadna. Allahumma hafadna bihifdik ya Rabbi al-Alameen. Jazakallahu khairan, my dear brothers and sisters. Please um, join us, inshallah ta'ala, in a couple of weeks uh, in another episode with another name of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك